Hi, Sherry. Is this Sherry that's uh, 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 Mr. Brophy's uh, assistant? Uh, this is Gary Stein. Hi. I was trying to reach the news tips. Uh, I have something that might be interest for like a watchdog report. Can I run it by you? It's got really that, that much to do about me running for Congress, although it might. I, we have friends, you know, I've had this connection to the illegal community, the illegal alien community for years, not, not so much now, but the woman and the husband who originally introduced me to Berto, the guy that lived with us for five years that's been back in Mexico for three, the husband of this woman was paying a traffic ticket in Hamilton Municipal Court and he was picked up by ICE. He's in Newark now. I've found now Yvette, his, uh, his wife, texted my wife, my wife, a week ago, uh, about five days ago in Spanish, about 2 o'clock in the morning. And I followed up with a phone call the next day. And listen, she's been running herself ragged with lawyers in Philadelphia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He's up there rotting in Newark, although I don't even... He, I hear he has a room and a, and, and a roommate from Guatemala. It's not exactly a prison cell. Chun Men... Well, maybe we get into this further. His name is Chun. I could tell you his last name, too. But, I mean, the, for God's sake, he's in Hamilton paying a traffic ticket. Now, these... I, mean, I know the ins and outs of what goes on with this community from Berto, living here for five years. Half, nine-tenths of the time... 99% of the time they're profiled and that's why they get the ticket in the first place and now he goes to pay the ticket oh yeah I mean I've seen it a million times or I did see it a million times I'm not all that you know I'm out my connection is very not that great the last three years since Berto went back to Mexico but I still I mean this guy visited me uh, month and a half ago just to say hello he was passing he was looking to buy a car somewhere so he says and he stopped by the house I was outside working that's all he wanted to do was say hello he's immaculately dressed he goes he's a church goer the whole family is church goes but what's worse is they have three three children that were born here and are American citizens and Chun and Yvette have been in this country since the late 1980s. They spent a lot of time in California and, and then eventually wound up in New Jersey. And I met Yvette, I don't know, seven years ago, and she was the one who introduced me to Berto. Berto lived here for five years, and that has everything to do with why I've been running for office for the past four years. But forget all that. Chun's up there, picked up by ICE. I mean... I mean, they may. I mean, do they, these guys want to work hard, or they just want to go into municipal court and grab the first person they see. Now, this stuff is not known by most of us, but this is how ICE operates, and Chun is just one of thousands picked up this way. His case might be worse because he has three children that are American citizens, and now the father is no longer uh, the breadwinner, and the mother, who also works her, you know, buns off. She's laying out money now for lawyers who, I mean, there's a whole industry of immigration attorneys now, and what, you know, they're, ba they're going to battle ICE, and, and, that, and very few cases are won that way, because ICE has the upper hand. I mean, this guy could get kicked back to Mexico now, and where does that leave his children? I mean, and it ties into this presidential election with Mitt Romney wanting to self-deport uh, illegals, wanting, wanting them to self-deport. Newt Gingrich talking about those that are in the community for 20 years or more, or 25 years. That These folks apply, you know, fit that, you know, bill. They've been here since the 1980s. And I don't know if your paper wants to write about it. I don't know if Yvette would give the permission or the lawyer would think it's a good idea, but I know this. Tomorrow I'm going to see Yvette. Uh, I said, let me see you before you call back, you know, you call the lawyer again. They've already laid out 500 bucks. I think the next step is going to be a, a major outlay of money. And you know how they come up with the money. They all pool their resources, all the relatives, all the friends. But what's even crazier is now we get back to me, and I'm a candidate for Congress. One of my slogans, and there hasn't been any reporting on this, I picked 
different slogans for each county since I was able to. I'm not the column A candidate, which is called party endorsed candidate or something, column A, so I'm B and have the ability to pick slogans. One of my slogans is, what is it? Uh, the dream, pass the Dream Act yesterday. Now, Chun's children aren't even Dream Act kids. They were born here. Dream Act kids are kids that are born as, you know, as infants brought across the border. And then they're here 20 years. His are, were born here. Uh, so, uh, and one of my other slogans is, I think Mexico, United States unification just an idea. It's one of my slogans that's going to appear on the ballot. And there's been no reporting on that. I don't know. Is, is it just hum, hum, you know, ho-hum about any kind of election? I mean, we all filed a week ago. The one who Pat Darcy and the Democrats picked hasn't put one word on the internet or one web, you know, one word on a website. There's just nothing about her. Nothing. This is zero if you look her up. And there's a story, I mean, there's a million angles to the story, but let's not lose focus of a vet. I mean, they, she's crying her heart out for a week, or probably either crying or getting, or, or, or thinking that these lawyers are going to help her, and they get him back. I mean, she must be on a, <clears throat> a roller coaster. So if a reporter is interested, I could find out from a vet. I mean, if you print this thing a month from now, if you, I mean, the, the, my elections, my primary race is June 5th. If you print it in the end of June, I don't know what happens, but I mean, there's a million angles to this thing. I'll give you my cell phone. One way or the other, we're either me or me and Cindy are going to meet with a vet tomorrow, before, hopefully before she speaks to the lawyer. I've contacted someone from Facebook. I mean, you the press writes articles about Alyssa Cooper and her social, you know, reach out uh, efforts last year when she's running for assembly she had nothing I I'm all over the place on Facebook I've been in contact with someone on the West Coast his name is Richard Hartwell and he's very involved with these cases with ice and then picking up illegals and he's and I suggested to him that we write something for change.org which I used to blog on about Berto in Mexico and if you if you've seen the news, I happen to catch it in I think last week's Time Magazine or Newsweek. There's a huge article about Change.org. They write petitions. They weren't even doing this when I was blogging, and it was featured on on the network news about Change.org. Someone, a young lady in her early 20s, getting signed. I don't even remember what cause she picked, but she got something done. She got hundreds of thousands of signatures. So that kind of stuff goes viral. And he knows a lot of people at change.org, but he's waiting to hear back from me. I didn't speak to that for two or three days. I just spoke to her now. I think at the time I tried to reach out to her two or three days ago, she said she was sitting with a lawyer. And there isn't actually, and then, and then what's even crazier is when I filed to run for Congress last Monday, one of the people I recognized in Trenton was Anna Little, who's gotten pretty far running for elected office, although she, I mean, she's a former mayor and a freeholder. She hasn't gotten elected to Congress or Senate yet, and she's a Republican. And wouldn't you know, she's an immigration attorney, and I spoke at length to her husband, who's a heck of a nice guy, and we were talking about this very stuff, and and, and in that uh, three, four days later, do I find out that Sean, my friend, was picked up by ICE. And, and this, according to this Richard Hartwell, you know, the guy on the West Coast, he says it's just a bunch of lazy ICE people where, you know, union members just taking the easy way out and going to courtrooms and making, you know, filling a quota. And then he said, back in Washington, now that's all political back there. And I said, I had some suggestions which he discouraged, you know, what we could do. But it's kind of interesting. Meanwhile, I've got that slogan, uh, you know, Dream Act, passed the Dream Act yesterday, and there are going to be signs put up. I'm hand-painting signs. Eventually, those signs will be out there saying, Miss, you know, Mr. Dream Maker, that's a song, uh, Stein for Congress. It's all, yeah, it's a lot, of, a lot of stuff I told you. I'll give it to you. I think I did. I, let's, I'll give it to you again. 703-1741. What one thing I hope to do tomorrow is go to the courthouse in Hamilton just to hear what they have to say for themselves. I mean, how they let, and Yvette and Sean lived 
in Hamilton for at least 10 years. Now they're, uh, what's the name of the town? Richland, I think. They're just outside Hamilton. Well, not they. Now he's up in Newark. It's her and the three kids. I mean, they paid money to send the kids to private schools, religious schools. They don't have any money. I mean, they work so hard. And now he's sitting up there in Newark. All right, Sherry. All right, good. All right, you too, Sherry. Thanks. Bye.